Let's take a look at some of my best sales of 2019. My name is Margaret and welcome to my channel, Texas Gal Treasures. I'm a homeschooling reselling mom that flips things on eBay and Etsy to help support my family. And I thought it'd be nice to take a look at some of my best sales from 2019. So you get an idea of what kind of things sold for a really good profit over the last year. So you might think about looking for similar type items if you're out and about. The items I've chosen to share with you are things that sold for $40 or more. I didn't include every single thing because I recently did a video sharing my top jewelry sales of 2019. So I chose a few of the jewelry pieces from that video to share here. So if you've already seen that, you won't just keep seeing the same things over and over again. But I'll make sure to link that video if you're interested in seeing what jewelry sold um, for me best over the last year as well. So there's about 35 pieces here that we're going to take a look at all that sold for $40 or more. If you're new here, welcome. Go down there and hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it so that you don't miss any content that I put out about reselling online or, or other ways to make money from home. I wanna hear from you too. Let me know what your best sale was from 2019. Leave a comment down below and check out the comments and see what else everyone else has sold in the last year. So these are sales both from Etsy and from eBay, and I wanted to share them both because I sell on both platforms. So if you aren't already, it's a good idea to cross post your items on eBay and Etsy or eBay and Poshmark, just depending on what you like best. All right, so this is a Closinet butterfly, and I included this one because there were three of them that sold at the same time. So technically, this sold for $15, but the three of these sold together for that to make that $45. And basically, they're like these ornaments that have a string. You can kind of see the gold string here um, that I was trying to hide in the picture. But um, so I sold the three of those for about $15 each. Um, and so it, it was, so I guess closer to $45. I guess I mistyped there. So that's what those are. And I picked them up for a buck 50 each at an estate sale. So that's pretty cool. It was about let's see, four, $4.50 and turned it into about $42, $45. Next up is this Henri or Henry Bendel, I don't know if I'm making it fancy, um, wallet that I picked up at a garage sale and I think I paid about three bucks for this and it sold for $40. Now, this is one that I can't exactly remember where or when I got. I think I got it at a garage sale, but I may have gotten it on clearance somewhere. The reason I don't remember is that when the kids were younger, we had like a birthday stash. Like whenever I would find new and sealed stuff, I would just throw it in the tub. So if we ever got invited to a birthday party or something like that, we had a stash of presents to take with us and that was in there and then one day I decided you know maybe I should look these up the things that I have in here so I did I started digging through and this one was really um, desirable and I think I originally started at around a hundred dollars and took an offer on this of 81 because there's not a lot of Rapunzel you know from like Tangled um, Lego sets. This is something that I got not too, too long ago. It's so close to the end of the year and it's a stamp set like, like for leather working or metal working. And I believe I paid about five, four or five dollars for each set. So I paid up a little bit on them, but they sold for $50 together. Snoopy, Christmas Snoopy sold. Christmas Snoopy is always a, a good bet. And I, I believe I bought him for about $7 at an estate sale, and this sold for $52. This is also a Jim Shore piece. I, I don't have a picture of the bottom to show you, but you can tell by the style, usually on the base, and you see on, on his ear, it's got that kind of quilted look. So a lot of times Jim Shore items will have like a base, and it'll have kind of a quilted or patchwork look to it. Um, and so those items are worth looking up if you find it something that's Jim Shore. Once you know it, you are able to spot it. So something to look for. 
And this is from my Star Wars lot that I still haven't finished taking pictures of and listing. Don't tell. But this ad had sold for $90. I still have an Ewok village over there and a Darth Vader head, the like carrying case. I have a whole slew of big stuff that I need to take pictures of. I need to have a big stuff picture taking party or something one day. I think I'm going to do that maybe tomorrow. But anyway, the ad ad sold. The ad ad, that Star Wars lot, I got it in a garage sale. I mean, when I say next to nothing, I'll have to pull up the, the haul video from that because I got all this G.I. Joe and Star Wars stuff amongst a bunch of other things. It was before I moved to Austin. So it's been, I'd say about two years ago. And I the guy, I think they were moving and they were just like, just take it. I think I spent about 25, 30 bucks at the garage sale for everything I got. And I'd gotten some stuff for our homeschool. And so yeah, it was a really great uh, score. It's like one of those once in a, once in a blue moon kind of uh, score at a garage sale. So at at sold for $90. These I got in the bins just recently. And because they are breakable, it was 10 cents. And I can't remember if it was 10 cents that they charged me per. So it would have been a dollar or 10 cents for the whole thing because they don't really get really nitpicky about that. If I've got a tub full of breakables, they don't count out to make sure there's 20 they just are like a buck ninety nine. So it's because at the bins where I go, the Goodwill Outlet, um, it's pay by the pound except for breakable items. And if it's a breakable item, you get twenty items for a buck ninety nine. And these were little pots for bonsai. And I can't remember. If there's another name for it. Maki. I can't. I think I'm saying that wrong. I think it's called something else. I mean, uh, but these sold for $75 and they were in the end. If you've ever been to the bins before, people like load their carts up, then they go through them and they throw stuff back. And so I always look through the ends of the bins to see kind of what's been thrown back. And this was, I was on my way out of the bins and this box, it had a lid and everything was in the, at the end of the bins. And so I opened it, saw it and was like, this is coming home with me. And $75. This sold really fast too. I also got this Better Homes and Gardens new cookbook in the bins. Books at the Goodwill Outlet are five for a dollar. So this was about 20 cents. This, um, if you see Better Homes and Gardens cookbook, that's the binder style. It's worth looking up. I think this was 1974, I think. It was in the 70s. Um, so but yeah, it sold for $45 and relatively fast. Now, the, the picture on this one is not amazing. There's a few things from eBay because things roll off on eBay um, after 90 days, so you can't see your sales. I need to do better about keeping track of that um, and keeping pictures and stuff. But um, I was able to go grab this from one of my old haul or sales videos. And these were Houston Astros promotional hats made by Goya, like a food product, like can, they do can like beans and stuff like that. So I think I still have another tweed one that's not plaid like this, but it's just like a straw hat with a, an orange band, I think is what it has. But anyway, I got two like this and then the, the tan ones for a buck each at a garage sale. And these ones, I sold two just like this for $43. And they sold pretty fast as well. So that was nice. And then this one, again, I had to grab a screen a screen grab from my sales video from a while back. This is a purse I got at a garage sale. I think I paid about three bucks for it. Mona B upcycled canvas purse. And I believe I took a best offer on this. It was, it might have been $42. I left it in. I did the research and then I was cutting things out that, had, that it was under 40 so we'll just say it was 40. It may have been like 39 or something like that. So yeah, that was pretty nice. And then this ring, this one I did, I did take an offer of about 40 or 45 on. And this is a Jasper ring that was, it was pretty large. And I think this one was one that came in my, the lot that I got for 500 bucks from a lady, um, a whole bunch of jewelry. So there's that one. And then this is another one that sold this Nerf Vulcan um, it's Nerf gun. It's huge. It was huge and uh, very heavy. 
and really not fun to ship and it sold for $50. I was really hoping to get more for it, but I think this one came, I got this one and a bunch of other Nerf guns and a big tub for 60 bucks um, when I was out garage selling with one of my kids. And they convinced me, my kids convinced me, get it, 60 bucks for all that Nerf, and I did. So this ring sold recently, it's a sterling silver marcasite and just crystally glass stone in the middle, it sold for $42. And then this one, I never have done that video where I talk about this um, Bible. This one I got, oh dear, was this one I got at the bins? No, no, this one I got at an estate sale for a dollar. It's a New Testament Army-Navy edition, and what made it so cool was it was inscribed, or it's not inscribed exactly, but it had the the soldier's name inside, and I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. I think it's a soldier. Military personnel. I don't know the exact rank and all that stuff. Anyway, the guy's name was inside it and the person who bought it was really interested in the history of the person and so we ended up corresponding through Etsy uh, because he bought the Bible and then he started looking up the the soldier, I guess I would call him a soldier, and found out you know who he was and what he had done and where he was buried and just all kinds of really cool details about his life and it made it so personal so it made me really glad that the person who bought it did all of this went to all this trouble to find out whose bible this was and it was from 1919 so it was about a hundred years old right at the time so it was really interesting to hear and so he bought it for eighty eight dollars and is giving it an amazing home now this book I got in the bins. So this one was also 20 cents because books there buy for a dollar and it sold for $45. I didn't know this book. I didn't know, I mean I knew the author. I, I hadn't quite heard of this story before. It's Nathaniel Hawthorne, Grandfather's Chair. What I did know was Art Nouveau. And so the cover of this book is an amazing Art Nouveau kind of imprinted look with all the swirls and the flowers. And so I bought it based on that. I thought, well, 20 cents, it's a really cool book. Somebody might want it as decor in their house, you know. And so when I looked it up, I saw, I think, a red one like this, but I, I can't remember if I saw a blue one. Anyway, I priced it at $45 and it sold relatively fast. And then this guy, so this metal bunny sold not that long ago, and I got him at a garage sale for three bucks, among some other metal figurines and a piece of art that I ended up keeping for myself. I don't think I ever shared that either. It's downstairs. Anyway, um, so this guy um, sold for $82, and I get a lot of questions about, like, how do you know to, like, was he marked? Was he Brit? No. He wasn't even that big. He was about, like, this big. But I could not find anything like him. And so because he was so unique, and I know there are people that are musicians, people that like rabbits, people that are going to want to buy a gift for somebody that's unusual. There were so many ways that somebody could find this and just fall in love with it. And so I priced it at $82. These little froggies came at the same garage sale, little metal figurine frogs, and they sold for $40 together. They're little shelf-sitting frogs. They were really cute. And then this ring came, I believe, also in that $500 lot. It's the gift that keeps on giving, I tell you what. Um, and this is a sterling silver and turquoise ring that sold for $75. This is a beer stein that I picked up at a garage sale for, I believe, a dollar, maybe two, but I think it was a dollar, and it sold for $40. I've generally done fairly well with beer steins. I don't think I've had, ever had any that have just sat and never sold. Um, they all eventually do sell, so it's worth looking at, especially if you can pick them up pretty cheap. Aha! Uh -huh. These, I picked these up at a thrift store in Dripping Springs, and I think they were a buck fifty each. So, what does that make that? Six, seven fifty, or something like that? Under ten bucks for all of these, and they are escargot dishes, and they sold for seventy-five dollars. So, this owl was in the, let me try to make them a little bigger. He's big, I guess. 
I uh, was in my jewelry best sales and it sold for $116. I paid up on this at an estate sale. Oh, and now I can't remember what I paid for it. I want to say about $10. I, 10 or 12 maybe dollars on this. I really felt strongly that it, I was definitely going to be able to make my money back on it. So it's silver. It has like the shell, turquoise, onyx, mother of pearl, and it's a Zuni design. Uh, so yeah, it was very easy to, to take that gamble to make my money back on that. I got this Austin City Limits hat. Ooh, it was either at that thrift store in Dripping Springs or it was at an estate sale. I can't remember. Those are the last like two places I remember buying hats. Uh, but I bought it for about a dollar and it sold for $40. The reason I priced it so high, because Austin City Limits is still around, the hat was a vintage one. So the design was vintage, the font may have been a little bit different, the colors. I couldn't find another one that was black and red like this, so that's pretty cool. Because a lot of times, people that want to wear something aren't going to want, well, some people don't want to wear the same thing as everybody else. And so having Austin City Limits and wanting to represent that, but not wear the same hat as everybody else, they're willing to pay a little more to find a hat that's unique. Oh boy. So these are those little, they were little tiny decorative plates that had butterfly wings inside them. And they sold for $88. And I can't remember where I, I think I got them at an estate sale, garage sale. I can't quite remember. I'll have to look back and see. But I didn't spend very much on them at all. And they sold for 88 bucks. This ring has come and gone a couple times. It sold and returned and sold again. And so it finally sold and stuck for $58. I have another ring that's turning into that. It's, it's sold and come back. I think just one so far. Hopefully that's it. I'll relist it and, and have it sell again. But yeah, $58 on this ring. And then this one is also in my best sales, uh, jewelry sales. And this is a serpentine necklace. I picked it up for a dollar at a garage sale and it sold for $46. So uh, when I say look for unique pieces, look for natural stone, look for silver, of course silver, but um, this, I really jumped out at me because it had that really big piece of serpentine that had been carved. So it was pretty cool. Pretty cool. I went ahead and put the title that I had on this listing because I knew I was going to forget what it was, like what exactly it was. Well, I see it now, but it's bigger. Um, the, it's a Boy Scout knife. So it's got the Boy Scout of America insignia on it and it was in pretty rough shape. It was hard for me to like pull it open and get these pictures and I made sure to disclose all of that. Ooh, I got it at an estate sale and I think I paid a buck for it and it sold for $45. This ring, I was really gambling at, at pricing it at 50 bucks and honestly this is one of those like where I am surprised that it actually sold for that amount because I'm like uh, really? But it did. I, I can't remember now my reasoning for like, I'm pricing it crazy high. I may just been have one of those, one of those days where I'm like, everything's $50 today. So it, yeah, it sold finally for $50. And this is a cherry quartz necklace. I can't remember where I got it, honestly. And, but it sold for $90. I had to get a little help with the research on that one. And then this was also in the $500 lot. This is also in the best jewelry video. Uh, this is a sterling silver and turquoise petite point bracelet, Native American style. I can't remember if it was designer signed. I don't think so. But it sold for $115. And then this is a cinnabar neck, uh, bracelet, rather, cinnabar and cloisonne bracelet that sold this year for $65. I was really happy to get this bracelet because it gave me the opportunity to research cinnabar and find out more about it. I did a whole video figuring out like what is cinnabar exactly and how can you tell real cinnabar from fake cinnabar. That's the red stuff and it's a lacquer. So it's like painted on 
and they they paint it in layers and then it has to dry before they paint the next layer so it's layer after layer after layer and then they carve down into it so when you see real cinnabar you should be able to see little layers in the carving when you're looking at the layer of carved down the nest whatever the actual terminology for that is this is finally so this is something that's been up for a long time I put a high price on it and just waited for a long time it sold for $148 it's a sterling silver in abalone money clip and it's got this like Aztec calendar Mayan calendar I always get them mixed up but I just thought it was so cool I hadn't seen anything like it I put a crazy price and I waited forever it was probably up for over a year but it sold um, I was willing to wait for it apparently or else I just forgot about it but it sold for $148 this was also in that $500 lot I forgot to put the price on this it was about $100, $115 that it sold for I might be off a little bit but it was over $100 that this sold for and it's a Douglas oh what's the last name I don't, I don't have it on here. Anyway, it's a Native American designer uh, bracelet. Same thing with this one. I forgot to put the price on this one. I believe this one sold for in the 70s, in the, like $70, $75 in that range. I could be wrong. This one is for sure, and so is the other one for sure in my jewelry video that I did, Best Jewelry Sales. So those were my best sales from 2019. Hopefully 2020 is going to be even better. Let me know if you've had any really amazing sales so far in 2019. I know it's only been a couple weeks, but I've had a couple of really good sales as well. So go down, leave me that comment, and I'll check it out. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye, everybody.